morning, if they look a little sleepy, shake them a little bit. Just, just grab them by the shoulders, shake them, and tell them to wake up. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to be at the house of the Lord this morning. It's such a, such a pleasure to be here today with you. I'm so glad that we've came together to worship the one true King today. Let's lift our hands all over this house and just invite him into this place right now. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We lift your name up, oh God. You are high and you are lifted up, Jesus. Lord, we ask right now that you would come into this place. Have your will and your way in this house, oh God. I pray that your presence, Lord, would just fill this place. Saturate us with your anointing today. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every Sunday school classroom, Lord. Touch, oh God, the teachers. Touch the students today, Lord. I pray right now we receive, we will receive what you have for us, Lord. Speak to our hearts and speak to our minds today. Touch pastors, he brings forth your word, Lord. Let it touch our hearts and touch our minds. And we thank you for it, Lord. You're so good and you're so great, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise all over this house right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says, He that the Son is set free is free indeed. Praise God. There's no question if God sets you free. 
He did set you free today. Now, whether you stay free or not is up to you. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says it, it compares it as a dog that returns back to his vomit. Praise God. I don't know about you, but yesterday's gone. Today is here. I'm moving forward. Moving forward today. If you have your Bibles today, turn with me to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse number 19. I'm so glad that all of you are here and you can officially say that you have survived the blizzard of 2018. Uh, we'll be passing out uh, our hashtag, uh, I survived the blizzard of 2018, here shortly, later. Uh, I don't know what the official total is. I think Brother Eric has joined our gas car. He's going to get somebody. But whoever guessed one inch or less, you probably got a good chance of winning. Um, just want to give that out to you. Uh, I'm being facetious. The danger about uh, this storm was not the snow, but the ice that was underneath of it. So that's 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 something to be uh, to be considered. Uh, unless you're unless you're me and you empty a 50 uh, 50 pound bag of salt on just a small area and just like start throwing it down. I mean, it looked like. It looked like a, uh, my uh, sidewalk was covered with about two inches of snow, but it really was just salt. <laughs> just salt. <laughs> uh, but a, uh, I'm thankful you're here today. Uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse number uh, 19, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, the Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Today, praise God. Now, of course, we know uh, people that study the Word of the Lord, uh, people that understand God's Word, uh, that, the, that we understand that Father is not a name. Uh, it's just common sense, Father is not a name. Uh, we understand that the Holy Spirit is not a name and Son is not a name. These are titles to who God really is. We know that the Father has a name. His name is Jesus. We know the Son has a name. His name is Jesus. And we know the Holy Spirit has a name. His name is Jesus. So, so uh, we understand uh, what, that, that, that when you baptize in the name of Jesus, you are baptizing in all of the deities that God, that God is. And God is everything to all people. And so we just had to get that out of the way because there might be someone uh, that, that may not understand that. And so that's pretty much simplicity. Uh, but I think what I want to concentrate on today is the, that, that word, that word in there that says, Go ye therefore and teach, and teach. We've got some things that we need to give to the next generation today. So I just want to minister for a few uh, minutes today on a, uh, a message or a sermon entitled, Things You Do to Prepare for a Baby. Things You Do to Prepare for a Baby. Let's all pray. Jesus, we love You, Lord. We thank You, God, for the Holy Word. Jesus, we thank You, God, that this Word has given us life. It's given us hope, God. We've seen Your love in Your Word, God. Love letters to Your, to your children, God. We thank You and acknowledge You as our Heavenly Father, God. We, we know that You care about us. We know that You're there for us, God. We know, God, that the Word of the Lord has never, Lord, caused us to go astray. But God, it's always been there, a very present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need, God. We thank You, Lord, this morning for our class. We pray we can be a blessing. Touch our teachers right now, God, that are teaching all of our students the Word of the Lord. Bless them greatly, God, for their sacrifice. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And we said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated today. It's imperative that we 
uh, understand that the Bible declares to us that uh, it is our job. It is our job to go and to make disciples. It's our job to teach. It's our job to train. It's our job to move into a certain element where we can um, give to the next generation uh, to come. Uh, I looked at this title and I got thinking to myself, uh, many couples, uh, for many couples, the time before a child is born is really an exciting time of preparation. Uh, much time is spent on preparing the nursery or where that baby is going to lay. Uh, time is spent learning about childbirth, um, some of the things that will happen during childbirth. Couples may go to Lamaze classes uh, to prepare for the delivery. Many couples will prepare uh, by reading books concerning uh, child development and what's, what's, what's good foods that that child needs to eat or uh, what's proper sleep times or habits. And uh, I'm, always, I'm always amazed because so many parents uh, often try to um, compare their child over what state of normalcy is. But I'm convinced that uh, there are no two children that are alike. Right. There are no two children that are alike. And right. uh, kids will grow and they're, 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 according to their DNA and some of those other particular genetics. Um, there's no two kids that are alike. And, and so, uh, but but. Parents will look at particular uh, aspects of normalcy and child development. And these things are important to make sure that we're monitoring and, and trying to push our, our children to do what they need to do. Um, uh, perhaps uh, once a child is born, uh, you might surround yourself with magazines or books or perhaps uh, internet articles about about uh, what about about the to how to reenact or or invest interest into a child's rearing or training that is to go. I know. I know that we're not too far removed from seeing what it's going to take to potty train Braxton. And, and I will tell you, uh, after having tons of dogs, I have never been able to potty train one of them. Not one of them. I, uh, I'm the worst person. Uh, maybe that's why I don't like dogs. I don't know. Um, but, but, but kids are worse. <laughs> kids are worse. My wife does a great job. I am, I'm what they call unpatient, and I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough not, not to pray for patience uh, for the Lord. So, uh, so uh, I, just, I, just, I just, but I know that, I know that, that day is coming, and I know, I know that, that, that time is coming. But I was telling you, you got good parents focused on doing everything they can to make, uh, make certain their child has the best chance, the best chance of life. And, and I will tell you today that it should be no different spiritually. It should be no different spiritually. And if I'm, if I'm right and I've, if I've heard from the Lord like I have, I, our church has got to prepare to get ready for babies. Our yeah. church has got to prepare to get ready for uh, uh, that, that, that pitter-patter, if you would, uh, of little feet around the church. I'm not just talking about little babies as much as I am new converts and, and, and souls that come into the church and people that are born again of the water and of the Spirit, people that have repented of their sins, people that will come out of the world and they will come into the church for the very first time. And, and, and this is imperative because Jesus said, He, said, he, commanded, he commanded them. He said, he said, go, go and make disciples. Go out there and teach them and go out there and train them and go out there and evangelize to them. But we must understand that Jesus' commission to us was more than just evangelism, but it was discipleship as well. Well, it was discipleship as well. Uh, it is not a matter of choosing uh, between evangelism and discipleship. Evangelism, I will tell you, without discipleship creates an environment of, of malnourished babies that will ultimately die. I want to repeat that again. Evangelism without discipleship creates an environment of malnourished babies that will ultimately die. And if, you, uh, if you've been in church for a while... Uh, you'll understand, uh, you may not understand exactly what I'm talking about, or maybe it's been a, a long time, but, but can you imagine for that very first time that new convert comes into church? They feel the power of God. They feel the, the authority of the Word of the Lord. They feel the Spirit of God. They, 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 they respond to the call of God to repent of their sins, be baptized in Jesus' name, and to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine what takes place in their lives? Something has died, and now there's a new man, a new 
new creature that's living inside of them. And that's powerful. And that's, that is, that is a, a blessed hope that God gives us. But, but, but can you go with me and, and can you leave the church house and get into the car and go back to an unsaved husband or an unsaved wife? Uh, can you go back to your environment where your whole surrounding is filled with worldly people that, that loves worldly entertainment, that loves worldly pleasures? Uh, can I tell this church today uh, that if we're not careful, we'll, we will think that we have arrived uh, by just, ha- by just uh, being there to witness the born again experience. Uh, but if we don't invest in them, if we don't disciple them, uh, if we don't teach them, uh, if we don't train them, uh, the world is ready to kill them. If we don't instill in them the value of what it takes to live for God, then we have no right to complain that they didn't stick. We have no right to, to argue, well, they just, they, just, they, might, they, they just didn't want it bad enough. No. Can I tell you right now, babies will eat what they're fed. I don't care if you give them good food or bad food. They'll eat what they're fed. And the world has a lot of food that they're going to feed them. This is why the church must make discipleship a number number one priority for 2018 because it's not good enough just to get them through the door but we got to allow them to enter into the gate the gates of heaven one day by teaching them and training them and discipling them and loving them and fellowshipping with them and caring for them Amen. what good is to get them through the door if we don't intend them to get through and get them through God's gates Oh, praise God. What good is it to get them through the door if we don't intend to get them through God's gates? This is imperative. The only way this can happen is through discipleship and through training. The Bible says in John chapter 15 and verse 16, He uses this fruit that will last. And there's some things that we've got to give to the next generation that will last. And some things that I think that we do a great job on. The great job at is we, we do a great job of concentrating on the Holy Ghost and getting people filled with God's Spirit. We do a great job of praying for people that God would fill them with the Holy Ghost. But can I tell you, that's just the start of it. That's is the beginning of it. If we don't teach them how to love one another and how to be patient towards one another and how to, how to be forgiving to one another, if we don't teach them how to, how to solve problems without, how, without, without resort, resorting to carnal, to carnal methods, then, then we, we've, not, we've, only, we've only got some, ba- some babies born. But we, we have a job to teach them not only to be filled with God's Spirit, but to be godly and to be Christ-like. This is a gap that we have got to close, church. We are not only in the life-saving business, but also in the life-changing business and the life-sustaining business that God would give us. And I will tell you that babies are vulnerable. Babies are vulnerable. My, I, I, and I, I can say this because I've got a baby. I've got a baby. I've got a, I've got a baby that doesn't understand that you don't need to get too close to the fireplace while the fire's lit. Why? Because that baby doesn't understand that when you get burnt, it hurts really bad. And I've, 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 I've met some parenting and, 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 and being a youth pastor for over 10 years and being a pastor going on, going on my eighth year, uh, I've, I've met some different parenting styles. And, and there are those parents that, that, will, that, will tell, that will tell you, well, I'm just going to let them learn on their own. And here's, here's, here's my response to those, to those parents. And if you're in this room today, please don't, please don't take this offensive because I say the same thing about everybody. Uh, uh, if, if, if that's your philosophy, then, then why did God even choose you to be a parent? If you're going to let them learn their own, then please uh, don't let them be, a, you don't need to be a parent. <laughs> let, let the world be your parent and, and let, 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 let the teacher at the school be your parent or let the, let the nursery worker be your parent. And, but, but God has designed parents so that we can teach and train our children to, to be better people, to be more Christ-like, to be good, to have, to have a good work ethic, to, to tell them how to love, to show, to show them how to forgive, to show them how to be meek and how to, how to be humble. Our, our job as parents is to teach them these things because, because when you buy them, batteries are not included. 
Batteries are not included with that. Uh, you've, you've got to teach them. You've got to train them. You've got to, you've got to tell them and, and, and everything. I mean, you, a, a good parent will get them get involved in everything, not only in, in the good stuff, but also the stuff that they, the kid doesn't like. You're trying to better them. In every aspect of, of life, you're trying to better them. You're trying to give them fruit that will last. You're trying to, you're, you're trying to, see, you're trying to show them the value, uh, the value of, that, of that daughter. Hey, you need to, you need to study because, because God isn't going to bless you on your test if you don't study for it. You're trying to teach that son. Hey, guess what? Homework stinks sometimes, but guess what? You're going to go all throughout life. You're going to have to learn to work. You're going to have to learn to, to, to you know, when you don't feel like it, you got to wake up in the morning and you got to go and you got to, you're trying to teach them values in life that will tell them that guess what? Life, life is going to go, th go going to throw curveball after curveball, but you're telling them, guess what? When life throws you a, a curveball, grab a bat and keep swinging. When you fall down, keep going up. You're trying to teach them the value of life. You're trying to give them good fruit that will not only help them today but will help them for the rest of their life. Why don't we do this with our babies in Christ? Why don't we do this with the new convert that, that, that comes to church and, and they're, they're, they're on fire for God the first week but the second week they don't know if they want to live for God no more. Why don't we tell them, hey honey, you fell down. Get back up again. Alright Satan, he's been attacking you. Get to the house of the Lord. Oh, that's alright Satan has thrown this at you and he's ruin that at you. And he's attacking from your family to your friends. Honey, you need to find you a prayer room. Let's go to church and pray together. Let's go out to eat together. Why is it that we don't give them life-sustaining fruit? Yes. The Bible says that the enemy, the devil, he prowls around him, seeking. Uh, the Bible says he's roaring as of a lion because he's not a real lion, but he roars like a lion looking for someone to devour. The Bible says his mission is to steal, to kill, and destroy. We can look back at the Old Testament and even from the beginning of time, the, the, the devil asked the Lord, I want to get one of your trophies and I want to get Job. If I can get Job, then I've proven a point. As Satan and wants to kill our babies, why don't we protect them? The only way to protect them is to teach them, to love them, to nurture them, to feed them. I would say that our, our, the church must not follow the model of the world. The world says if you have a baby, then let the mama just take care of it. And no, and, and not being disrespectful, but there's too many kids that don't know who their parents are. They don't know who dad is. Dad's still out trying to have more babies, living a, living a fun life. The church can never follow this spirit. The church must understand that it's not good enough for us just to baptize them. We have to train them, be there to support them. And so I've learned, I've learned in, in going to church my whole life that there's some things that hinder the growth, pro the growth process to new converts. And I will tell you, uh, that, I, and I say this because I, I really am an overthinker, our church has, 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 a good, has a good thing. Our church has mature saints of God in it. In other words, is this? I've been in churches where the, the 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 ministry the ministry couldn't concentrate on the new convert because they was they they they, they didn't have enough time to change diapers because they were too busy changing the pens. Oh, praise God! I just woke you up today. Praise God! Been in church for fifty years and still need a phone call every month. Come on now. Been serving God for 20 years, and bless God, I, I, had, I had the sniffles, and pastor, he never called me. Well, bless God, I mean, Jesus' line is never busy. Our church is good at this. Our church is good at this. We have mature saints that actually want to help. My hands are not tied up by changing depends. My hands are tied up by changing diapers, by helping the new convert understand. And this is, this is where the rubber meets the road, church. This is where the rubber, ru the rubber meets, meets the road. That new saint doesn't understand, and this is, this is something here, that they don't understand the simplicities of it. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost and God saves you, that, that, that doesn't mean that you can't, don't have to come back to church. They don't understand that. We, we, need to, we need to quit assuming that because we assume, well, pray, bless God, you had a Holy Ghost experience. Well, praise God, when, when I got it in 1950, I came back to church. Well, they don't understand that. Right. 
They don't understand that. What we have got to do is we've got to teach them. Guess what? Praise God. You are a new babe in, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But now the journey has just started. It's just begun. There's some living to do. There's some growing to do in God. The things that you used to do, I'm going to ask you to now to inspect your whole life. I'm going to ask you to do some fruit inspection. And I'm going to ask you to, 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 to try to be more like Christ. Try to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Try to be what God's wanted you to be. Now that you're saved, now you got a, you got a commitment and a duty to go out there and help win somebody else. Uh, tell someone else about the goodness uh, of what Jesus has done for you. Uh, and when you fall down, get back up again. Uh, and the church needs more encouragers. Uh, we need more faith believers. Uh, we need more merciful people that will tell the new baby, when you fall down, keep getting back up. Uh, you will learn to walk if you don't quit. Imagine this. I, I, I mean, imagine. Imagine this. I mean, this is, this, uh, this is really, really the way that the church has been sometimes. Uh, the, the church will look at new convert, and we will automatically think that, guess what? Just because, because you know, we, we have some people, bless God, that went down the water baptism, Lord, feed the Holy Ghost, and you, and you were smoking before you went down, and when you got back up, the Lord took all that away from you. Now, come on now. That's awesome. That's an awesome testimony. But to be honest with you, that's, that, that's, not, that's not for everybody. That hasn't happened for everybody. There's some people that went down in Jesus' name and God filled the Holy Ghost and they still got urging and cravings. And, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we're not careful when that, when that new convert falls and they scrape their knees, we'll push them down and say, well, bless God. The reason why you keep falling is because you, you keep smoking. You keep doing this. You keep partying. You keep drinking. And the problem with that is we wonder why they don't want to come back to church. A better, a better way of parenting is this. All right, son. All right, daughter. You, you get messed up today. But guess what? You've got to learn just not to give God your Sundays. But every morning and every afternoon and every night, uh, you're not only in this heavenly, uh, heavenly apparel, but now you're being fought by a real devil. And now you've got to be aware of his snares and his attacks. And when you wake up craving a smoke, you need to go and get you some Holy Ghost smoke and learn to pray through again and give it to God every morning, every afternoon, every night, and teaching them. Just don't pray with you at the altar, but you've got to learn to pray without ceasing. Just don't teach them to pray at an altar. Anyone can pray at an altar. <laughs> but to live for Christ, you've got to teach them to pray without ceasing. I just, uh, God doesn't, just doesn't want to be a part of the Holy Ghost experience. He wants to be a part of every day's life experiences. Uh, he wants to be your God when you, from the rising of the sun to the going down the sun. He wants to be your God when you go to work. He wants to be your God when you're dealing with your kids. Uh, he wants to be your God in every aspect of life. Uh, he wants to be a part of it all. In fact, I'll go one step further. He wants to be the father of it all. And if we're not careful, we'll forget to prepare the nursery and we'll, we'll give birth to babies uh, that we have no intention of feeding. My Lord, yeah. come on. My Lord. Now come on church. Come on church. We have too many church people that are screaming against abortion and I'm, and I'm with you. Yeah. But there are babies aborted in our churches every Sunday. Because right, right, right. when you don't feed them, you don't give them milk, you don't feed them, they're aborted. They're thrown out in the trash. Never for anyone to love them except for a devil that will only pretend to love them for yet a season. The church must do a better job. We must go to another level in this. Now, so I, I want to I want to talk a little bit. I know I know it's already uh, ten thirty, but I want to talk just a little bit about this. Uh, the ministry's job is to teach and train, but I will tell you that ministry is a very broad word. It's a very broad, broad, broad word. I enjoy teaching the word of the Lord. I enjoy discipleship classes. I enjoy talking about Jesus. I, do, I just, I love talking about, I don't care, I don't care what we're talking about. We'll find a way to talk about Jesus. I don't care if, if you like sports. One of the coolest things that I like about, about sports, and, and I've had the chance to go to a few games, but I love it whenever players go, then they kneel, they kneel before the game starts. I mean, they're praying. I, I mean, I, I like that. That's, that's awesome to me. I love it. I love it. I, I, I love the awkwardness of after a game, a player 
player does something really cool and, and, and the, the news comes up to him and says, how did you do it? Well, first, I just want to give honor to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I love that stuff. I and mean, really, I do. I, 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 I love it because, because the first thing that hits my mind, I don't know if it hits your mind, but my mind, the first thing that hits me is like, man, he, he must have had a good mom and dad that helped him understand that Jesus is the reason why he has an ability, why he has a talent. So I'm saying this, I can put Jesus in everything. I could put Jesus in anything. If, if, if the Bible tells us, he says, what's her thy hand find to do? Do it with all of thy might. When, when I'm swinging a hammer, Jesus is good. When I'm writing out a report, Jesus is good. When I'm preaching a message, Jesus is good. When I'm vacuuming with a sweeper, Jesus is good. I don't care what you're doing. You can turn about Jesus and do everything. And we got to teach our new babies, our new converts. It don't matter if you're swinging a hammer or if you're riding a tractor. Jesus is good. Jesus is great and greatly to be praised. It's all in him. It's all in him. Jesus teaches us. He teaches this awesome principle found in Luke chapter 12, verses number 6 and 7. He says, Are not we sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not only one of them is forgotten by God, not one of them are forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Not only does the Lord know how many hairs you have on your head or how many you don't have on your head, but He also has them numbered. He knows the difference between hair number one and hair number 40,000. He knows the difference. So when one of them falls, when you're coming, the Lord says, that, that there's hair number 10,000 and one that just fell down. That's how much God knows your business. Even when you don't invite him to the, to the, to, to the, to the inspection of your life, God still knows the hairs on your head numbered. And he don't stop there. He says, he says, he says the, here's your hair number. He says, but don't be afraid. You are worth more. Someone say more. more. You are worth more than the sparrows. God says a sparrow sold for two pennies. And, and, and God knows and loves the sparrow. He knows them exactly where they are. And, but God says, hey, guess what? You're worth more than the sparrows. If I know where the sparrows flying down in Florida today and coming back to, to Ohio when, when winter is over, then I know which way you take. I know which road you're taking. You are worth more than the sparrows. Let our babies know that they're more than just a number to a church. They're more than just 252. They are important to the kingdom of God. They're worth more than what the devil tells them they are. God says, I've got concern for a sparrow, but don't you doubt that I have concern for you. And I want to, I want to say this today that I believe, I believe a spirit uh, of on all the churches across the whole world has spirit of self-centeredness that must be crucified at the altar. Right. Right. Self-centeredness must be crucified at the altar. Now this, this, is, this is what they would call in the old days, this is the nitty-gritty right here. Because, because any time that you don't care about a baby makes, makes, makes an impression that you only care about self. And if self was crucified on the altar then maybe perhaps we care more about the babies. Almost every time after church, one of the things that, uh, that, that Braxton does that uh, I would tell you, I don't know why he does it, but he does. He'll, uh, when he finally gets released, and I say released as, as the term that it, it best describes him, release, the releasing of Braxton. He'll kind of make his trip. He'll come over here. If daddy's over there, he'll kind of give daddy a quick hug, and then he'll kind of walk over here. He plays with this. <laughs> He loves this. He would love to be in there, but no. He loves this. He'll get up there. He'll go round and round and round. And, and I don't know why he's doing it, but, but if this is any, any indication if he's going to be a church runner, he's got a good start because he just runs round and round and round. And one of the things that I, that I do is, is, is I, I open up the doors. I make sure the doors are open because I, don't, I, don't, I, I know that my kids are going to get hurt, but I, 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 just, I choose for them to get hurt not by my neglect, but by their living. So I open up all the doors. And one of the things that consciously goes to my mind is, is, is if a door closes, a baby's hand is going to get inside yeah. the door. Right. It just constantly runs in my mind. And maybe, and I don't remember any time that my hand really got caught in anything, but maybe, maybe subliminally or subconsciously, maybe it did. I just don't know it. So I'm just always opening up doors because I don't want the baby's hands to get hurt. When a church has a mindset for new converts, 
You do the little things so they don't, they don't get hurt. Right, right. Yeah. Think about that. Let that sink in your head. When, when, when a church has a concept for new converts, you do the little things that it takes so they don't get hurt. In other words, is this. Uh, uh, if, if that new convert comes in the church, can, can I just make this open plea? And maybe we might have to edit this from, from the video. But can I just make this open, open plea to our, to our church family? Please don't tell that new convert about everyone's business. Right. We get it. You remember what so-and-so did 10 years ago, and, and you've got a great memory, and, and maybe you've been blessed with that. But that new convert doesn't know that that person messed up. They don't need to know that person messed up 10 years ago. Because the truth of the matter is, is that I've seen people that change overnight. And I know that God forgives at that very second when they actually repent and they have sincere in their heart to do it. And, 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 but, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. It, it isn't because we don't want someone knowing about someone's business, although we don't. But the more important thing is that is a, a baby can only hold so much weight. They can only hold so much weight. And when you put the weight of them upon a, a, a judgmental spirit or perhaps a, someone that's fallen and, and, and mistaken, what you're telling them is this. That, what you're telling that, that baby is, is this. Don't ever mess up because I'll never forget it. No one ever talks about that, but I, 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 just, I want to bring that from, 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 from the dead today. Don't ever do that because a baby cannot, they can't handle it. They, they, maybe the reason why they can't get a breakthrough in their life is because, because, because some people planted a seed of doubt in their heart. When they come to the front, you've got so-and-so praying for them, and the first thing that comes to their, that mind, that baby is, is this, wait a minute, why are they praying for me? They messed up themselves. Why, why, why do I need to change? You, you, you told me that so-and-so hasn't changed. And what happens is, is this. The baby will never, will never, will never learn to live for God because the weight, the weight is too heavy for them to walk. It's too heavy for them to crawl. And so they die from stagnancy. I never understood why, why uh, 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 and it's never happened here, and I can honestly say that, but in other churches, I've never understood why a, a, a seasoned child of God would tell a baby, hey, guess what? That pastor is crazy. You don't even listen to that pastor. He's crazy. The ministry's nuts. Oh, they did this back in 2007, or this happened. Why, why would you want to plant seeds of doubt into that, 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 that ministry that's ultimately going to save them and cause them to make it to heaven? No. What we've got to do is prepare the nurse. We, 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 we got to prepare for that baby to live. And I know not everything is perfect, but what that baby needs to understand is this, that we don't care what you did last year or 10 years ago. We believe that God forgave you and so should we. We believe that God has wiped away the stain of sin from your heart, so should we. And we got to protect our babies. All the time, all the time in this day, this day and generation that we're living today, all the time, I'm always looking at my kids, what, what, at what they're watching, at what they're watching. I want to know what, what, they're, what they're watching because I'm not ignorant of the fact that Satan has used uh, uh, YouTube, he's used uh, television, he's used Netflix, he's used cable TV, he's used the internet, he still uses magazines and all. He's using all of this. So I'm always trying to watch what are my kids watching, what's going on. And, and, and I can always tell when something's not right because the fruit will always tell what's in the root. The fruit will always tell what's in the root. The fruit will always tell in the root. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, as someone said, he ain't got no Bible for that. The Bible says you can tell a tree by its fruit. It's pretty much that simple. The problem is, is this. The problem is, is this. When that new convert comes in, their old tree has, has, has now died. But you and I both, need, both know because we've cut down a few dead trees around this church property before it may stand there for a little bit it may stay there we had a tree here in the back uh, I think it was brother Joel Protzman uh, he's probably teaching class Brother Joel Protzman he, he had cut it down he had cut it down he, 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 he put it, but the tree's been dead for years <laughs> it's been dead for years it was springtime the tree ne it never budded anything it just stood there what happens to dead trees is they begin to die from the inside out 
But the first indicator is, is that it, it, ha it don't have no leaves on it. it ain't got, it's not blooming. It's, something's not blossoming. So something's dead from the inside out. What the church needs to do is, is this, is that we understand a new convert won't have immediate fruit. But our job is not to cut down the tree. Our job is to surround the tree with the nutrients that that tree needs so that that tree can live. In other words, is this, if you don't feed the tree with water, then how can the tree grow? That new convert needs fed all the time. Amen. I know Braxton, Braxton, uh, he eats probably once every two hours, three hours. He's snacking on something. Which is maybe why dad has gained a little bit of weight. Because whoever backs and eat, daddy will probably going to try to eat. <laughs> a new baby in Christ will not be able to grow feeding one time a week. They won't. Coming to church Sunday will not, will not be enough. Can I tell you what they need? What they need is, is this. They need church. They need church. As, as much more as you see the day approaching, get, get to the house of God. But what they really need is they need for the ministry, the church, to surround them with good biblical examples and teaching. You do not have to be a preacher to be a minister. You do not have to be a preacher to go out and teach a Bible study. You do not have to be a preacher to go out and open the word of the Lord and to break bread with someone and tell them this is the way that you need to be. This is how you need to live. And according to God's holy teaching, you do not have to be a pastor in order to teach a Bible study. You just have to care. You just have to care. In fact, some people may not be able to show a scripture, but you can tell them how to live in life. To someone, to that, to that new babe in Christ, that did that new convert that just lost their job, they need that gray-haired man or woman to tell them, hey, I remember when I lost my job, this is what I did. I sought God's face and I went out and I filled out about 30 applications until I got me a job. Or perhaps, perhaps, guess what? I didn't even like the jobs that I had, but I had two jobs because I didn't get the one job that I wanted, but I wasn't going to let my family starve. I wasn't going to let my kids go hungry. And then you learn, you learn, you learn by the sharpening of the iron that takes place from a seasoned man or woman of God that's not afraid to tell and care about somebody. You learn those lessons that when the going gets tough, the tough go back to the house of the Lord. The Bible said, a part of the maturing process, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 11, he says, I've learned in whatsoever state that I am in, therefore to be content. You learn this stuff by the God's word. You learn that when Satan throws curveball at you, that you don't complain and give and put your faith in Him more than you do God. All right, all right, things aren't going good, but I'm still content. God's still great. You've learned the progression found in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 when it, when it talks about when I was a child, I did childish things, but when I grew up, I, I put away childish things. You realize this, church, that if we are going to be a revival church, we're going to have to understand these new converts will act like children, they'll act like babies, but we still must love them like, like the Lord loves them. We must care for them and nurture them and train them. I know that they keep doing wrong but let's keep encouraging them do the right thing and if we show them and teach them then God will bless them I want us all to stand today Paul believed in this 1 Corinthians chapter 11 it says follow my example as I follow Christ he said, he, said, he said, I want you to follow what I'm doing because I'm, going to tell, I'm following what he's doing. Now, let me tell you something, church. I want my kids, I want our church kids, I want our, our church brethren, I want them, when they look at me and how I respond to my wife, I want some of you men to, 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 to follow my example because my example is him. <laughs> When God looks at the bride of Christ, I want to be like Him. I want to love her as, as Christ loves the church. I want to love her. And, 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 and that's how we grow together when we compare ourselves in the image of Christ. 
So we learn, so we learn. The Bible says in Philippians, I don't have time to read it, but basically it says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, read it. It says, following my example, brothers, take note, take note of what I'm doing because I'm trying to give you a pattern. I'm trying to give you an example, a pattern for what you need to do. So in every aspect, well, I, I'm just going to let you know, when we get new converts, they're going to say crazy stuff on social media. Oh my goodness. They're going to post pictures. You're like, what in the world are you thinking? You, 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 you're going to look at their life and, and you're going to say, guess what? That, and what I'm asking our church to do is, is this, is, is, is don't become a child trying to correct a child. Don't become as immature, unspiritual thinkers in the process of helping someone develop their thinking. That process is to be like Christ. Christ has been patient with us. I don't know about you, but I know He's been patient with me. I've made mistake after mistake after mistake. I've fallen down. I, I knew better and I didn't. And God's mercy has always been there for me. How much, what, what, what can the church do to imitate what Christ has done in our life? Revival churches understand that new converts don't come perfect. That you have to train them. You have to, uh, you have to, have to change them. <laughs> I remember uh, growing up, uh, I had three three sisters. I remember they came out with the doll. I don't remember the name of the doll, but this was a, a revolutionary doll. Okay, you fed the dog, and the, and the doll the doll came with food. You fed the doll. Is that what it was, baby alive? And 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 the doll done peed and pooped. <laughs> I remember what I'm talking about. I remember that doll. I remember, I remember uh, uh, my sister Melissa. She would always have this 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 baby alive doll. And the doll, the dolls. I mean, and the the more you fed it, you've already finished it in your mind. The more poop. You know? you know. Here's the thing about this sin: is this the more? You, but 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 the process. This it taught them. That when they have babies of their own, that the more you feed them, the more they're going to do what they what, what they do. Here's the process. When a church is a revival church, it's not a pretty church. We gotta quit trying to be pretty. Because changing diapers is not and I'm pretty about changing diapers. In fact, uh, my beautiful wife, uh, it, 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 she yeah, it was just yesterday. Uh, Braxton, I had to change a, a diaper, and I'm changing a diaper, and she heard, she heard me scream, no, no, no! She didn't even come in the room. I mean, I, I noticed it too. Like no one came to my help. <laughs> Braxton's in this phase where he's got wondering hands as as we're changing his diaper. No! Fifteen minutes later, she said. What was you screaming no about? And she knew it. She, I mean, she, she has a great way of asking questions that she already knows the answer to, but she just wants to see my response. I'm like, well, Braxton, you know, put his hand back there. And she said, well, did you clean his hand? No, I left it out there. I, mean, I, left it out there. I was hoping you'd clean it after you clean the house. You know? <laughs> Here's the thing. I use, I use a practical example to open up my own life to say this. New converts will do things that we that we don't approve they'll post things that 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 we know as mature christians that we probably shouldn't do they'll go places that we know that, that that's a trap for you you don't need to do uh, they will mess up and, and because we've already been there and we've done that but let me tell you right now just because we know it's wrong doesn't mean we have to tell them that they're wrong just because I, I know, there's all kinds of examples I can give you. Well, I, I know you're going down the wrong path, but, 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 you know, you need to get your act together. And if you don't start doing this, if you don't start dressing right, if you don't start, then, then what happens is this, we, we kill the baby. And if you're right and you kill a baby, then what, what, what did it profit you? Well, bless God, I, I told them the what for. Well, praise God, they don't come to church no more. Congratulations. Their blood is on your hands. You don't hear this too much, no more. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it out today. Their blood's on your hands. 
Well, praise God. I had Bible to back it up. Well, praise God. You try to shove a T-bone steak down that baby's mouth and congratulations. You're mad because they fell down and guess what? They didn't even know how to crawl yet. You'd be better served to keep feeding them. You'd be better served to keep loving them. You'd be better served to keep showing mercy to them. You'd be better served to prepare the nursery for them. You'd be better served to keep hugging them and, and encouraging them and telling them that, that, that God loves you and so do I. You'd be better off taking them out to eat and loving on them and then coaching them and training them and discipling them. That is how the, the, the original church did it and that's how this church is going to do it. Well, pastor, did you see this? Did you see that? No, I, you know... Kids are going to do what kids do. <laughs> it is what it is. I don't, I don't lose any sleep over it. But what I do lose sleep over is this. Are they going to know that I still love them after they, met, that they fall and they mess up? That's, that's what keeps me up at night. Are they going to know that they have someone to run to? That our church is not going to be a judgmental church. But we are going to be a righteous church. We're going to show God's love church today. That's all I have today, but could you raise holy hands to Jesus? I just, I just want us to, I want this to get in your spirit today. I want you to hear my spirit. We got to get this in our spirit. Come on, there's some husbands and some wives, some, some, some newly married people that need, they need lessons, they need, they need discipleship and our church has got to get there. Our church has got to get there. They need to know how to love one another. They need to know. That, that it's all right to mess up, but you got to keep moving forward. You got to get back up. They need to know God's holy word. They need to know how God's holy word works for them. They need to know what it is to be loved by people that just met them. They need to know what it's like to go out to eat with different people and to, to fellowship with different people, to, to love one another and to care for one another. They need to know what God wants us to instill inside of their hearts and their lives. That just because you got divorced doesn't mean that you're a throwaway. God can still use you. God still loves you. That you're not throwaway, but God is still loving you and wants to instill in you. These are all things that the church can be using to tell the next generation. Jesus, help our church, God, become more like you. Help us, God, to be your hands, to be your feet. Help us to see through your eyes. Help us, God, to speak, Lord, through your holy words. Help us to love like never before. Put a deep love in us, God, to care about each other. Lord, because the world will be looking at us, God, at the way that we treat each other, they'll be looking about the way that we love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We said in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, shake someone's hand close to you. Lord bless you. Lord bless you. We'll be back here shortly.